Monica Transit. Uh, thank you for joining us. You gave a very insightful presentation here at Fundación Rafael del Pino mm -hmm. about how can we use innovation technology to foster the green transition. Um, so based on, on that discussion, I would like to have a dialogue on those topics with you. The first question is, the world, we know, if we read the newspapers, the world is experiencing an energy crisis. Prices of energy are going up. At the same time, many parts of the world have energy scarcity. Mm -hmm. So how can we use technology to solve this problem in a green way? Yeah, so many sectors of our economy rely on energy services mm -hmm. and much human activity relies on, you know, having convenient access to energy services for transportation, for heating and cooling, for electricity, um, for industrial processes. And so it's very essential to both provide high quality, reliable energy services um, to people around the world, as well as to make sure that those energy services are being uh, supplied in a way that doesn't contribute to greenhouse gas emissions. So essentially, this is called decoupling, you know, economic activity from greenhouse gas emissions. And um, what we, the situation that we're in right now, is different from where we were even just five, ten years ago in that we have a handful of clean energy technologies, including solar and wind energy, um, lithium ion batteries that can help with electrifying vehicles, as well as um, other clean energy technologies, um, such as nuclear fission, hydropower, in some places carbon capture and storage can be used. Um, we have a handful of technologies that are cost competitive and can provide reliable energy services without um, greenhouse gas emissions. And so the key right now, you know, given where we are with these technologies that have improved in recent years, especially solar and wind energy and lithium ion batteries, the key right now is to enable a rapid transition mm -hmm. to some of these cleaner technologies. And many people can play a role in this. And my research really looks at how individuals that are working on developing these technologies can further improve them. You know, the more cost competitive they are, the more sort of advantages they bring, uh, convenience and so forth in the case of electric vehicles, the mm -hmm. more rapidly they can be adopted and, and people will want to start using them. Um, so there's a role for engineering. There's also a role for engineering and developing um, additional technologies and reducing the cost of, you know, things like uh, alternative clean fuels, perhaps hydrogen and other clean fuels, um, and long duration energy storage and so forth. There's also a role, uh, certainly for the private sector, we've seen that private sector competition and innovation has really resulted in cost declines in renewable energy. There is the possibility to see similar improvements in other technologies that are needed to decarbonize the whole economy and improve the access to energy services around the world. And then policymakers, they play an important role in making good decisions, um, hopefully good decisions about technologies to invest in in terms of research and development and also putting incentives out there that can really stimulate private sector competition and innovation to make this transition to um, a green future. So they're at different levels, there are key roles for decision makers mm -hmm. to play. Um, and my research focuses on really understanding what are the key levers that we have to improve technology and bring about a more rapid transition. If, so you talk about a multi-stakeholder model uh, to solve this uh, pressing uh, problem. So when we think about the innovation ecosystem, what would be the advice that you give to the stakeholders here in Spain to foster a, an inclusive energy, a green energy transition? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think in general, what we should be thinking about is how to be very deliberate about the technology components mm -hmm. that we're either investing in as policymakers, investing in, um, in the private sector, developing as engineers and deciding to adopt as private individuals. And when I say be deliberate, what I mean is that we can be much more deliberate about what are the impacts that that technology will have, both positive and negative, 
um, you know, on the environment, on societies, really try to minimize the negative ones and increase the positive ones, tap into the analyses that are out there on the impacts of different technologies and sort of bring that into your regular process for evaluating technologies. We're all busy, we all have limited time, but I think when we look at our planet and the limited resource that we have, I think it's really important to include that step into how we're evaluating technologies. Also, we can learn from the successes that we've had in the past with those three key technologies that I mentioned, solar energy, wind energy, mm -hmm. and lithium ion batteries. There are some lessons emerging about how decision makers at these different levels can actually help um, encourage beneficial technology innovation. There are also some things that we should do differently um, you know, that weren't so successful in the past. So really looking at the past, it's not, it's not a perfect guide to the future, but we can learn key lessons from doing that. So you mentioned a portfolio of energy sources, and in Spain here we can explore both solar, but when, will you prioritize one over the other? Uh, will you sequence uh, the resources that you put? Yeah, so what we see is that there are great benefits to diversifying mm -hmm. um, in the sense of using both solar and wind. And each location has a different optimal mix. Mm -hmm. But when we look at Spain, we see that certainly using both solar and wind is beneficial. The reason is that these are resources that are um, fluctuating in their, variab in, in their availability, but those fluctuations are different. They're systematically different across solar energy and wind energy. So when you combine them, what this does is it helps to produce a reliable supply. Um, and you know this is all, I think, very feasible to do, and it, it involves combining hardware, but also some predictive models, um, even weather forecasting models. If you take all of this information into account, you can actually produce a very reliable supply from solar and wind energy. And then augment, as the amount grows, you can augment that with energy storage and some other supplemental technologies. Mm -hmm that can really provide this reliable energy supply. Very much a system approach. So to conclude, uh, so based on the research of your lab at MIT, are you optimistic? Uh, are we going to be successful in doing this green transition? Yeah, it's hard to say whether we will succeed in the clean energy transition and the green transition and hopefully a very society, you know, beneficial transition you know, on multiple fronts for society. Um, it's difficult to say whether we're going to be able to essentially bend the greenhouse gas emissions curve downwards to reach net zero emissions in time to avoid the worst impacts of climate change. Um, I can't really predict whether or not that will happen, but well, what I would say is that I'm very optimistic that we have the tools and the knowledge that we need to do this. I think it's very doable. Um, what I focus on in my own work is I focus on trying to do my best. So trying to do what I can to contribute what I can. And I think others, you know, will contribute other components of this. But if we focus on trying, you know, then I think this is really the best that we can do as individuals to help bring about this transition. Mm -hmm. It would be a real shame if we didn't bring about the transition, because there's all sorts of benefits to um, you know, society, to humans, to you know, preserving our ecosystems with this transition, and also economic growth, um, uh, economic benefits as well, so benefits to our economies, and you know, importantly, um, you know, human well-being and, and, and human development. And so it would be a real shame if we didn't succeed as a society in making this transition. I think it's very possible. And, you know, my approach is to continue trying and doing what I can through research to try to develop the knowledge that we need to advance you know, the key solutions that are needed to bringing about this transition. Jessica, thank you for a very insightful dialogue uh, and welcome again to the Foundation. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.